वेलकम फ्रेंड्स सो नाउ वी आर मूविंग इनटू टू द थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ द टोयटा प्रोडक्शन सिस्टम वी आर मूविंग टू अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट एरिया ऑफ टोयटा प्रोडक्शन सिस्टम व्हिच इज यू कैन से दर्ड पी ऑफ टोयटा प्रोडक्शन सिस्टम फर्स्ट टू पीज वी डिस्कस्ड एंड द फाउंडेशन इज फिलोसफी वेर वी डिस्कस दैट हाउ long term vision is required and once you have that long term vision and you are not looking for short term immediate gains then only you can take the benefit of toyota production system so the excellence cannot be achieved by following the shortcuts that is the message of uh, this uh, long term vision you need really need to work hard and work hard consistently over a period of time then only you can achieve the highest level of success so that is the basic understanding on which other p's are there then second p we focused in last many sessions that was based on process the idea was that if you follow the right process right product will automatically come so the focus is on process and when you develop the processes when you empower your processes when you strengthen the processes your output will accordingly be of the standard and therefore we discussed around seven principles for improving the processes how to strengthen the processes and uh, with that idea with improving the processes we address the issues related to waste where waste minimization waste elimination was one important focal area if our processes are better waste will be less and accordingly quality will be better so that was the idea we discussed with respect to second p and second p of toyota production system was also more about various tools and techniques in the beginning of our discussions we discussed the concept of house of toyota production system and in that house of toyota production system we discussed that uh, in many organizations when we are going for implementation of tps when we are going for implementation of lean manufacturing the focus remains only on that process aspect how to implement 5s how to implement jit how to implement kanban so only those you can say superficial aspects are implemented but uh, superficial aspects are incomplete without they are grounded properly into the philosophy of toyota production system now in this session we are moving to third important p of toyota production system that is people and partners now when we are talking of people and partner in our last session when we were talking of uh, adopting the reliable technology we particularly emphasized if you remember on a particular aspect that was uh, your adoption of new technology should add value to your people so that is the importance that is the significance toyota gives to the people and that's why toyota is a different type of culture then rest of the other cultures in the automotive industries because uh, this is third p of toyota production system so what does this third p or uh, this p of people and partners is that add value to the organization by developing your people and partner so that is the third p and uh, we need to do that kind of processes we need to adopt those kind of technologies those type of systems which help us in strengthening in improving in adding value to our people and partners and if we can add value to people and partner if uh, a worker working at the shop floor can also speak philosophy of your organization that is the real value addition for the organization that means you are able to convey you are able to develop a system where each employee from the top to the bottom 
understand the concept of organization why what we are delivering to the customer we are delivering car to the customer or we are delivering a solution for his transportation requirement so once you once even a, a small employee in the organization once uh, the shop floor worker also understands who all the time are busy with respect to nuts and bolts uh, can also speak about the philosophy of the organization that is the greatest strength of toyota production system so that is uh, where we are going to discuss next few sessions on the third p of uh, toyota production system the principle on which we are going to discuss in this session that is the principle number 9 of toyota production system and this principle 9 of the toyota production system says that grow leaders who thoroughly understand the work live the philosophy and teach it to others that means we need to develop we need to create an environment in which we can develop leaders from within the organization and that is a very very important thing because you see plenty of examples in this session also we will talk you see plenty of examples where we borrow leaders at the top position from some other organization they are the parachute leaders they are not grounded well in the philosophy of the organization and therefore they have limited success in taking organization to the world class level because you are not successful you are given a time of one year two year then what happens uh, you will be replaced by a new leader and therefore there will not be any long term vision for the organization each leader comes with his or her own idea and uh, he also brings some lieutenants with him and they all try to implement that idea it may get success it may not get success and when it does not get success then uh, that entire team is replaced by a new set of commander and his or her lieutenants and therefore uh, organization is not moving on a consistent path it will always follow zigzag kind of path because of new philosophies are being coming from different leaders so the toyota's principle say that grow leaders those who are understanding your philosophy in a thorough manner what are your values for what values you are living if you make uh, some american the ceo or uh, a important leadership position in a toyota organization that american may not be able to live the values for which toyota is known so unless until toyota creates leader from within toyota culture cannot survive so that is one important thing that uh, you need to grow leaders uh, who are well versed who understand your values and uh, they can live your philosophy and they are not only living that philosophy but they can also propagate your idea they can also teach they can also train the successors so that uh, a series of leaders can be developed within the organization so that is this principle on which we are going to elaborate now we see that uh, in many top organizations top persons such as ceos are brought in from outside to turn around ailing companies if you are uh, running a low performing organization if uh, you are not doing well in the market so the first thing what you are trying to do that uh, you will hire some top persons uh, from some good company and you expect that they are coming with some kind of magic in their hands they are going to turn around your organization so this kind of uh, myth is there in the market that uh, uh, these people they have some magic in their hands uh, and they will help my organization to get immediately from red zone to green zone but uh, it is not possible all the time it is uh, very very difficult 
and you hardly have some success stories like uh, concepts Lee Icoca that is one rare example where uh, Icoca changed the fortunes of uh, Kessler, but uh, it is not a day to day basis that uh, if you hire somebody from outside he or she is going to change the fortune of your company. So, what they actually uh, these uh, top persons who are uh, being hired from outside as I am saying that uh, they bring some of their confidence. So, that uh, with the help of those confidence uh, they think that they are able to implement their ideas. So, that way the entire new team of the top management is uh, being replaced and uh, when new team is there they implement new kind of philosophy new ideas and uh, that is uh, where we will see that uh, most of these organizations uh, are not going to achieve uh, the success for which uh, they are hiring these uh, uh, top level people. Uh, this is uh, a list of uh, some of the top uh, automotive news maker from the year 2002. This uh, magazine automotive news published annually uh, uh, the list of uh, news makers for that particular year. So, this is uh, from the 2002 issue of uh, this magazine. Now, if you see that uh, 5 persons are named in this list and uh, these are Bill Ford, Robert Lutz from which who is uh, from GM, then Dieter, then uh, uh, Carlos and only one name is there. Fujio Cho and you see that uh, all these names and Fujio Cho there is a difference between these names and uh, 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 this Fujio Cho that all these names who were the automakers of that year and the Fujio Cho that Fujio Cho is uh, a Toyota man and uh, he was in the Toyota company since long and all other people 1, 2, 3, 4 they were actually hired for changing the fortunes of these uh, companies uh, Ford, GM, Chrysler and Nissan. So, there are some commonalities in 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, uh, the Fujio Cho that is uh, the last name that was a person who was groomed like a leader within the total. Now, when we see that uh, when 4 persons are there who were hired from uh, different organizations for uh, improving the ailing organizations. So, now uh, why we are talking that uh, leadership need to be developed uh, within the organization, what type of benefit it provides uh, if uh, you have leaders uh, within the organization. So, that will be uh, seen if you read about uh, what were the achievements of these people when uh, they were named as newsmakers. Now, uh, he talks of uh, uh, Bill Ford, uh, the CEO of uh, Ford, uh, brings back uh, Alan Gilmer, promotes uh, David Thrillsfield and stars in TV commercials. But it is tough out there, Ford motor stock remains at around uh, $1.10 per share at that time. Though Bill Ford uh, was basically from Ford company, but uh, his career was uh, in doldrums. Uh, Sometime he worked for Ford, then he moved to GM and uh, uh, then again he joined Ford company. So, he was not a very consistent uh, in his uh, tenure, uh, he was uh, coming and going and uh, even at the middle level in the Ford, his uh, performance was not up to the mark, but uh, since he was from the Ford family. So, he was uh, given the position of CEO, but uh, despite uh, because uh, I am saying that uh, he was not that much insider because he spent considerable time outside Ford also. So, uh, even though he was named as automaker, but uh, his performance was not uh, up to the mark. Uh, so, that uh, you can say that he achieved something remarkable, though he tried, but uh, nothing great happened uh, for Ford company in that year. Then came the uh, uh, GM's uh, executive VP Robert Lutz. So, he was uh, like a 
very much outsider to this company. Uh, he was very success, uh, successful uh, marine pilot uh, and uh, he actually tried uh, to give uh, uh, you can say lot of motivational uh, uh, speeches, uh, motivation and energizing the top management of uh, GM, but uh, uh, nothing great happened other than uh, giving lot of his speeches. So, uh, that also was uh, not very successful example. Similarly, because we need to run fast, uh, we had uh, cases of uh, Chrysler, Nissan, uh, here also these people could not achieve uh, much thing, though uh, to some extent uh, the Nissan president uh, delivered uh, some success uh, and uh, he moved uh, from uh, the low credibility which Nishan was having uh, during these days to make it a more uh, credible organization, more reliable organization. But uh, uh, this uh, person Fuji Ocho, he was uh, uh, one very important thing, he created the industry record for getting the operating profits. So, that is uh, something where uh, we have highlighted his name in the green if you see, because he actually created something tangible for Toyota and uh, he was totally insider person from the Toyota. And uh, you can see this is just a, a small list, uh, but you can see many such examples that uh, those uh, uh, who are coming uh, with the philosophy in that organization they understand the organization much better rather than somebody uh, who is uh, dropped from the top to overlook the organization. I am particularly talking in terms of uh, Indian organizations uh, where this problem is even more severe. Uh, many a times uh, if we see our public sector organizations, uh, uh, we uh, get lot of uh, chairmen's, managing directors uh, who are from the inside of the organization and those chairman and managing directors, uh, if uh, they are from inside of the organization, these organizations achieve a higher level of success. For that purpose, if I talk in terms of uh, uh, BHEL, so BHEL as an organization which is uh, Maharatna uh, PSU, uh, they have considerable uh, consideration for this very aspect that uh, their CMD should be an insider and uh, large number of their CMDs are always uh, groomed within the organization. So, uh, that is uh, you can say uh, one of the reason of their success that uh, uh, they know what are the values uh, of these organization. And I have seen some of the educational systems also where the top positions are given to somebody who is not related to that organization and uh, good organizations are being ruined because of uh, wrong selection of the top people. So, uh, this is very important that uh, your leadership should be developed within the organization and they will be doing justice by adding value, they will be having uh, some kind of uh, belief in that value system and this will further strengthen the culture of the organization. So, we say that uh, we need to grow our leaders rather purchase them. If uh, we are hiring somebody from the outside, it is said as that we are purchasing the leader. And when we have a culture that uh, we have a proper succession planning, where leaders are automatically coming to the top. Uh, so, that is the meaning of uh, growing leaders uh, within the organization. So, uh, it is uh, a normal system at Toyota and uh, when you have this type of uh, system in the organization, it will also help you in eliminating a particular type of waste if you remember and that waste is of Muri. So, the Muri means unevenness. So, when you are purchasing managers, when you are purchasing CEOs, leaders for your organization, so different leader will come with different type of ideas. So, sometime the leader will say go to east. So, the entire organization is moving into east. Tomorrow a new leader comes, that leader will say go to north. So, everyone is going to the north. The new leader joins, that will say go to west, everyone starts moving to west. So, we keep changing our direction, 
because of new leaders joining my organization and that is creating unevenness in the performance of the organization. We will follow different direction during the tenure of different leaders, but if we develop leader, if we grow leader within the organization, then what will happen? Then this Muri will not be there because they all know what are the values of my organization and accordingly we will continuously work in the same direction. There will not be any issue with respect to change of direction of work of uh, my organization and uh, this Muri at the execution level will be eliminated. So, by developing the leader inside your organization, we are also addressing it is not a philosophical issue, but it is also getting translated into the elimination of waste that is muri that is the unevenness. So, you will be able to solve this uh, problem when you are growing leaders within the organization. Now, this concept is also known as this uh, uh, idea of uh, growing leader within the organization not hiring uh, top managers uh, or top leaders from the outside that is a Japanese term known as uh, Genchi Genbutsu. Now, Genchi Genbutsu means that uh, you are deeply observing the actual situation in detail. You have since uh, uh, long stint in the organization. So, you are able to deeply observe that uh, what is happening in the organization. You are perfect person to otherwise you are sitting at the top and you will not be able to understand what is happening at the ground. So, because you are uh, uh, thoroughly into the organization. So, you are able to adopt the concept of uh, Genchi Genbutsu and here you can demonstrate the ability and understand how work gets done and uh, it is very important. If a leader is not able to demonstrate that uh, yes, I also know how to do work by hands. And when you have this skill, this ability automatically you get extra power, then everybody starts following your instructions. But if people below you, if your subordinates know that uh, you are dependent on them to get this work done, then it is very difficult uh, to propagate your idea, to propagate your philosophy. So, it is very important uh, that uh, leader should demonstrate the ability, his skills uh, and uh, leader should know that uh, how the work is to be done and uh, if you are having these skills, uh, this will help you to get a better command, a better power at the workplace. And uh, since all the leaders in the Toyota are coming from the shop floor to the top level in the organization. So, they are already master then only they are reaching to senior positions uh, that uh, yes how to do work at this particular level. So, that is uh, the concept of Genchi Genbutsu. Toyota expects its leaders to teach their subordinates the Toyota way. So, it is uh, a part of their working system that whatever philosophy I understand, I need to transfer that knowledge to my subordinates. So, the uh, concept of uh, uh, this type are normally discussed under the classes of knowledge management, but uh, you see the comprehensiveness of this Toyota way that uh, in their leadership, they expect that we need to grow our people, we need to grow our partners and how can we grow, I do not want to do separate training programs for that purpose. Rather, it should become the part of our daily discussions that uh, knowledge which I have that I need to transfer to my subordinates. So, that is a very important thing. So, it need to be told to my juniors, uh, to my subordinates, to my team members uh, that uh, what is the philosophy of organization and uh, for what purpose the organization is existing. So, Toyota expects its leaders 
to support the culture year after year. So, it can create the environment of a learning organization. So, how the learning organization will be created? The learning organization will only be created when people actually add value to the culture. So, when I see that my seniors used to discuss work related problems, used to discuss the philosophy of Toyota way, the same thing I will do with my subordinates. So, that is the whole idea of developing the leaders within the Toyota system. And if we talk in language of another very popular name in the field of quality management who did wonders in Japan that is Deming and Deming in his quality management principles say that there has to be a constancy of purpose and that constancy of purpose can only be achieved when you have some sort of continuity in your leadership. When you have development program of leaders within the organization then only that constancy of purpose can be achieved. So, if you see the Deming's principles of quality management this constancy of purpose becomes a very important thing and this idea of Toyota production system exactly matches with the idea of Deming. Most of the time in Toyota company there used to be presidents from Toyota family only and in 1999 the first American became the president of Toyota motor manufacturing company and his name is Gary Convis. Now, Gary Convis when it became president of Toyota motor manufacturing company it was like a news a breaking news because he was the first person outside of Japan or outside of Toyota family to became the president of Toyota motor manufacturing company. But it also did not happen automatically it was also not like purchasing a president. Before becoming president Convis spent around 15 years of time to understand the Toyota way and when he perfected into the Toyota way then was offered the presidentship. And uh, he said in many interviews that after joining Toyota it was like uh, starting everything from scratch learning ABCD of uh, not only the professional life, but the personal life also. So, Toyota way is such a philosophical idea that it may affect your entire personality. So, your working life and your personal life also become tuned to the idea of uh, uh, Toyota way of manufacturing. And uh, if we understand this Toyota way of manufacturing, so now because we are discussing this uh, uh, people aspect people and partner. So, people and partner are at the center and uh, technical things uh, managerial and philosophical thing all these uh, dimensions are there to support your people. So, that uh, triangular arrangement uh, the uh, technical managerial philosophical that is uh, to support the people in your organization and uh, to grow people. So, that uh, they may become leader for tomorrow. So, that is the purpose of uh, uh, this kind of support system and when we talk uh, of uh, leaders in Toyota uh, production system, they have uh, defined uh, four types of leaderships and uh, in that uh, there is a typical term which is not discussed in uh, human resource literature the Toyota leader and uh, uh, they say that uh, managers are not just managing technology or task, they are promoting the culture. The absolute core of the Toyota philosophy is that the culture must support the people doing the work. So, it is all people centric approach and initially when this Toyota philosophy came into existence there were many people who used to say that it is a human centric manufacturing system. Then 
as I am saying that uh, when we are discussing the Toyota way of manufacturing, the common theme of leadership at Toyota. So, that is uh, this Toyota leader, this concept is there and uh, in this concept uh, you see that there are four types of uh, leadership roles uh, which are being defined, group facilitator, bureaucratic managers, builder of learning organization and taskmaster. So, this Toyota leader is a combination of all four, but in that uh, the maximum percentage is coming from builder of learning organization and the least is coming from the bureaucratic managers uh, who are following the concept of uh, follow the manager kind of approach. So, you can say that uh, around 70 to 75 percent is uh, those uh, uh, idea who are helping you in developing a learning organization that is uh, the major purpose of uh, Toyota leader. Then the Toyota leader also involved equally almost in facilitating the employees that uh, how to empower the employees and uh, also getting the work done. So, that is uh, another important two areas uh, 10 percent each you can say and then the least is follow the rule that is the top down directive kind of uh, uh, leadership role that is the minimum component uh, in the Toyota leader. So, these are uh, uh, four kind of uh, you can say classification uh, top down, bottom up, uh, general management expertise and in depth understanding of work. So, these are uh, the dimensions on the basis of that we have uh, four type of uh, leadership approaches and uh, all those four are required, but the maximum which we expect from a Toyota leader that uh, leader should be creating learning organization and he himself is a result of that learning organization. So, continuously you will get the leaders coming from your own organization. It is another indicator that uh, if you are not able to have uh, leaders from your own organization and you are actually hiring top managers from the outside of the organization, it means you are not a learning organization. Therefore, only you are uh, in a condition to get leaders from some other organization. So, automatically you understand that uh, there is something wrong in my organizational culture if I am not getting leaders within the organization. So, uh, with this we come to end of this session and uh, we will continue this people and partner part in our next session also. Thank you very much.